Up at the Ventana Wilderness Condor Sanctuary, you're so high above Big Sur and Highway 1 that the wispy cloud layer is below you. Condors like to perch as high as possible, and that's where the sanctuary sits, at least what's left of it. The sanctuary's executive director, Kelly Sorensen, is wading through the burned-out wreckage. Now back here was an observation blind and a, and a catch pen. And this was big enough that we could hold about 20 condors at once. It's hard to imagine that this pile of charred rubbish used to be a solid wood and aluminum enclosure topped by netting. And now it's just twisted metal and ash, pieces of hardware sticking up, a whole lot of debris that needs to be cleaned up because we're going to rebuild in the same spot. Sorensen directs the Ventana Wildlife Society, a nonprofit group working to increase condor populations. California condors are still federally listed as an endangered species, but these ugly face scavengers with such impressive nine-foot wingspans are beginning to make a comeback. After the fire, it first looked like the Big Sur program would have to be curtailed, possibly for years. But Sorensen says that the public response, with so many offers of money and volunteer time, has been overwhelming. Turns out there are a lot of condor lovers in California. And that's not a mystery to biologist Daniel George out at Pinnacles National Monument, south of Hollister. He says there's something special about these large, homely beasts. I like to think of them as elegantly grotesque. When the Big Sur fire hit, eight condors were in holding pens there. They were rescued and brought here to Pinnacles. Over the past century, condors nearly became extinct due to habitat loss and hunting. Now they're threatened by an unlikely danger, lead. Condors can eat dangerous levels of lead from bullets because hunters kill wild animals with lead bullets, and then condors feed on those dead animals. A state law was recently passed to ban these bullets from condor territory. Biologist Daniel George says that because of the captive breeding programs, there are now more than 300 condors, and about half of those, he says, are in the wild. To me, the, the California condor is a really powerful symbol of humankind's relationship to the Earth. Not only does it inspire us because it is able to reach magnificent heights in the sky and we're at a basic level inspired by its size, but I think we have an opportunity to learn from them. That's what biologist Alicia Welch is doing right now. She's leader of the Pinnacles Condor Field Crew and she's setting up her radio telemetry equipment up on a place called High Peaks overlooking Condor Gulch. Welch is learning how far and how high these condors can go, in part by tracking radio signals from the birds with this odd-looking antenna on a stick. We have tracked them all the way up as north as Livermore, outside San Jose, south as far as San Luis Obispo. They go east to Coalinga, uh, and then obviously west to the coastline. That's a territory about 100 miles wide and 200 miles long. There are about 15 condors in the wild at Pinnacles, and although two died in the fire, another 31 still roam along the Big Sur coast. They'll soon be joined by a few more. At the end of next week, the first two of the Big Sur fire rescue condors will be released in the wild up at Pinnacles. There's a condor in this ponderosa pine tree about two-thirds of the way up. He's moving around there. You see him? Back at Big Sur, Kelly Sorensen is proudly pointing out condor number 444. It's the first California condor in a century that was born from an egg hatched in a condor nest in the wild in Big Sur and survived, rather than being hatched in a zoo. For Sorensen, it's an emblem of the success he's always wished for the condor recovery effort. I mean, I even thought when we first got started that there was not much hope, but I did it anyway because I, I thought, but there's some hope, you know. Even when things look dire, it's, it's not too late, and we shouldn't give up. Sorensen expects to have his trapping and release pen in Big Sur rebuilt soon, and hopes the holding pen can be reconstructed by spring of next year, just in time for hatching season. For Quest, I'm David Gorn, KQED Radio News.